Welcome to the show. I'm Corinne. And I'm LaShondra. And together we're KNL Everyday CNA. I hope everyone had a fun and safe um, 4th of July. I know mine was pretty exciting. Oh, yeah. We had a good time. Yeah. Well, today on the show, Corinne and I are just going to chit chat about our experience and challenges we faced over the years of being a CNA professional. Mm -hmm. Maybe even get personal on some of the subject, you know? Yeah. Well, last week, um, we kind of talked about PTSD awareness, um, the symptoms, the red flags to watch for. Um, I want to share some of the things that I feel that could be some of those symptoms um, for myself. Um, most of you know that I have been going through chemo treatments. And for some reason, I've not just recently, but in the past, um, it's like I know when I'm going. I have it marked on the on the calendar, but for some reason, it's just like when I get closer to St. Louis, it's like mm -hmm. I literally get like sick to my stomach, like I break out with a sweat, and it's like these really anxieties just mm -hmm. hit me right. all of a sudden. So after we did that show, I'm thinking, you know, those could be symptoms definitely of that, you know. So I just wanted to share that with you that. Um, you know, during this pandemic and everything, it may not hit you all at once, but maybe months down the road or next year or something, you know, you could start developing these, mm -hmm. these symptoms and, and everything. So, um, you know, don't feel like you're just out there by yourself, um, you know, I mean, because I'm sharing with you right now that I have some of these yes. emotional thing, episodes that I go through. And, and it's okay to have them. You know, it, it, it's normal. You're not the oddball out there. And if anyone else is feeling that way, feel free to reach out to me. And, um, you know, I would like to hear if any of the other CNAs have had any of these experiences like I have, you know. Um, have you ever had anything well, like I've that? Well, I've always dealt. I've always dealt with depression, anxiety, but like this last year and a half, oh my God, it's been terrible. Been really bad because everything just shut down and changed all of a sudden. And when you when you can't go and do things that you normally could do, which it probably wasn't safe then, but we just didn't have. It wasn't just known. You know, germs right. have been everywhere. Right. But when it's brought to you, you want to be more cautious, so you stay at home. You don't be around family, friends, and it's just, it can. It can put you in a mood to where mood you just, you know, you're in your house just looking at walls, and then you're thinking, you're really starting to think, and it's right. depressing you more because you just, you feel alone. But like you said, you're not alone, but some people don't like to discuss. Some people think it's, sh it's shameful to have depression and anxiety, and it's not because I'm telling you, everybody deals with some form of depression and anxiety. Right. They might not be diagnosed by a doctor with it, but we do. Like, far as, like, me going to work every day, I still have, like, depression and anxiety because we don't know what's going to go on. Everything keeps changing. Right. We're, you know, we don't have any residents or any staff positive, and then, boom, we got them, and then we're back at number one, you know, and it's just, it so can. Do you, so you mentioned... Um, the COVID and everything, do you guys still do the testing as much as you, you do? Yes. I mean, do you know, I mean, do you get like nervous? Oh, this is going to come back positive. I today? do because then you brought that up because we've said like, we do rapid testing every day and we sit up there and then when they call you and tell you to come up to the desk, you're thinking, oh, but it's like, it'd be because maybe the sticker thing haven't closed all the way mm -hmm. and your testing come back, but it do, it gives you, cause you don't want to be the one. And I know all my coworkers feel the same way. You don't want to be the one right. to be positive, but it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You just have to be safe. Right. But, yeah, and I get anxiety every day thinking, am I going to be the, you know, test positive today? Right. I just keep trying to do what I can do. And I know your experience from COVID is different from mine. Um, I was actually in the hospital when it broke out in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I was being moved from floor to floor to floor mm -hmm. trying to keep safe. And I imagine you were at work moving your residents from room to room. Oh, yeah, most definitely, you know. yeah. 
So, I mean, that was really uh, stressful for me. Oh, yeah. So I can imagine what that was like to the veterans being yeah. moved around and, and not knowing and, and Yeah, in a different, in different environment area, you mm -hmm. know, and it's, it's yeah. hard. It's hard to adjust to any, like, especially them. They get used to certain things, and it's hard for us to adjust and just think about them, you right. know. Their right. personal belongings, they might, we might misplace them here or there. Take a minute to find them because you're at the time you're thinking about their safety, mm -hmm. but then again you gotta think about oh well this person their personal their items yeah, I know through the years okay I got certified in 1985 I'm showing my age <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's it's really changed over over the years a lot um, I mean I remember I started out wearing nothing but white uniforms. Mm -hmm. Um, earrings, we weren't really allowed to wear, like the hoop ones that you had on. And, okay. And mm -hmm. um, we used posies, if some of you are old enough to remember what posies were. Um, we used restraints back then. I mean, we even uh, yeah. used, I mean, they were posied into their chairs. Mm -hmm. um, at the first facility that I worked at, she even went around and had a pencil and actually marked on the posies to make sure they were being released every two mm -hmm. hours and we were standing them up. I mean, she was strict. Mm -hmm. um, I know as far as some of the things that we were able to do back then, we're not allowed to do now. Right, yes. um, we did a lot of soap sud enemas. We did mm -hmm. a lot of, um, back then it was feeding. Now it's assisting with mm -hmm. the meals, but we did a lot of syringe feeding back yeah, then. Yeah. I mean, it has really changed over the years. So what year did you start as being a CNA? 1998. So year, yeah, the year I graduated changed. high school. I got my, <laughs> well, I got my CNA in high school. So, yeah, and it's, it was, well, back then when I started being a CNA, we did have, we could use like the bed railing mm -hmm. and maybe not so far as like restraints, restraints like you, but we could restrain them a little mm -hmm. more like. But, you know, like you said, now right. it's totally different. But, yeah, it's, it's like a big difference from. But also I see it's a big difference from me working where I work at today versus where I worked at in the past. Mm -hmm. Because we have, like, strict, strict, you know, you know that. Like right. we, But at the other places, you can kind of do a little more, you know. With everything. Yeah, like. It's just, it's, it's a big difference still, yeah. but. Now, were the, you, I cannot remember. Um. Did you start out in the white uniforms, or were no, you able to wear the, I was just the in, colored yeah, ones? Yeah, just in color, yeah. So it, it really has changed um, over the years. Yeah, y'all had the fancy hats, and they, we didn't have Oh, yeah. That. We had little bitty, when I started <laughs> we didn't have out, we had little bitty we hats just, that had seen it just along with the right. LPNs and the RNs had hats. Yeah. And I wore a lot of the white dresses. We had the white nylons, mm -hmm. the white. Uh, shoes. Yeah, we, I mean, we were know, pretty snazzy we just, we looking just back then. <laughs> Y'all were. I'm from, seriously though. I would have loved to experience that, but we just, you know, wore whatever uniforms. Now, some places I have worked at, we had certain uniforms you could mm -hmm. only wear. But then, as you know, now you can just pretty much wear. Yeah, I I kind of like the colored uniforms that we're able to wear now, but I'm still very very partial to those white ones. They just look nice right, and right. clean and professional. Not that CNAs do not look professional in the cartoon tops and, and all mm -hmm. that, because I'm sure your residents and clients and patients and stuff like to see that. And it makes them feel like they're not like institutionalized. You know, you're bringing a little bit of happiness, you know, the color and everything on your uniforms. Right. But um, let's switch and talk about NACA. How did you get started in NACA? Well, I got started at NACA for the facility from the Missouri mm -hmm. Veterans Home in St. James. Because back in Texas, I never heard about NACA. And then when I moved here, I didn't really hear about NACA at the other nursing homes. But when I started working at the Veterans Home, they have the NACA program. So that was awesome. Right. I really think that's a good. Now, that's how I um, became familiar with NACA. Um, so I've been a member since 2007, and I have to tell you, being part of um, NACA has been a highlight. 
of my career, um, not just from being on the board of directors or doing this show with you, but it really made me feel that the profession that I chosen um, has been worth every long hour, every mm -hmm. holiday, you know, I right. mean, everything um, that goes along with being a CNA, it was worth it. Um, it was good to know that there was association that stood behind you, yes. um, empowered you, it, it inspires you um, oh, to definitely. become a better person. Um, when I was first introduced to NACA, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. You know, there's really association out exactly. there that's just for us. Yeah. And I, I was really just blown away. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, if you're watching the show and you um, are just hearing about NACA for the first time, um, you are really missing um, an opportunity um, to grow within yourself as well as professionally by not being involved with um, with NACA at well, all. And the thing I like about NACA is their mission. You know, their mm -hmm. mission is to elevate the professional standing performance of certified nurses assistants through recognition. Mm -hmm. And we never had no one to recognize us. You know, right. they always recognize the nurses, mm -hmm. but not us. You know, so that was, I'm really happy that. Yeah. Yeah, I am too. Um, I know um, some CNAs were probably not recognized during um, our Week to Shine, CNA Week. Um, but please do not let that discourage you. Um, fix each other's crown, straighten each other's gate belt, and uh, just remember that the job that you are doing um, is worth every downfall every emotion, every tear, yes. you know, everything. And just remember um, your why, why you became a CNA and why you're doing it. You don't need your facility to give you a t-shirt, uh, free pizza, free donuts, <laughs> or anything else. You yourself know the reason why you became a CNA and what that job title details. So you don't need a, no. a good pat on the on the back or, or what, anything. What makes me happy is the residents, the veterans mm -hmm. tell me how good right. of a job I'm. That's who I look forward to. Right, exactly. I like, you know, I mean, that's who I'm there for at the end of the day. So right. as long as I know I'm doing the best I can, mm -hmm. yeah. So. Now you have a different um, job. You're a CNA, but you are you also are a driver. Yes. Can you fill us in a little bit about that? I mean, I was a driver yeah. too, but right, I, yeah. it, it's different. You it's talk different. me into doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, I don't know. People just think driving, oh, she just drives or she just, no, we don't. Mm -hmm. Like we have to, like, we actually get to work early prior to our appointments to make sure they're fed, they have not, you know, they're dressed nice, mm -hmm. they're just everything is together for them. Right. You know, we take meals with them. If, we, if they don't want that meal, we will get them something, you know, so it's like a lot more. We have to make sure if they're DNR, if they have, they need oxygen, how many oxygen right. tanks we're going to have to make sure we have, you know. It's like, it's like a lot of stuff to do. It's like a lot of, it's mentally. Right. And people don't understand that, like, mm -hmm. we don't just, and me personally, I don't just drive them. I go in the doctors. If they want me to go back in the room with mm -hmm. them, you know, I give them that choice, you know, would you like me to join you? But, like, we listen to all their medical, you mm -hmm. know, and then stuff they don't understand, we try to tell them. Right. I mean, it's, it's a lot more to this driving. I mean, some people might just drive, and that's fine, but I don't. Right. And I know you didn't. They need Because I learned they from need, you. They need that break <laughs> off, of the, off of the hallways and stuff, but in reality, it's not just going and putting that key in that ignition and finding your favorite radio station. Um, it's so much more to that. And one thing that I really enjoyed about um, going and being a driver is you got to spend one-on-one -on -one yes. time with your residents. Mm -hmm. And they actually open up to you. They really do. They tell you your problems. And it's just like, oh, you know, you're just on a different connection. You really are. You, you are. I mean, because you are totally responsible um, for them outside that facility. And another thing is you mentioned 
Um, you make sure their clothing is clean. You make sure they have their breakfast. You know, you make sure that um, whether they are a DNR, you know, so you'll know whether you have to be ready for CPR or anything. And it's, um, you are the first thing that the public sees. Mm -hmm. So if you did not take the time to make sure that resident looks nice, you know, that reflects on you, that reflects on our community, yeah, because that reflects on the facility. One time I said, I had them say, well, why you come in so early? Because you don't understand, like, mm -hmm. it's up to me. It's up to the CNAs, don't get me wrong, on the floor to make sure they, mm -hmm. but I'm going to make sure, because right. we're both represent. I'm representing mm -hmm. the home. And then you're a, you know, I'm not going to let you go right. out. It's not the fact that you think that they can't get them ready. And that's it's a, just, that's you're another, just making sure. And that's sure. another thing to help them. Mm -hmm. Because we do get busy and we, we, sometimes we are understaffed or overworked. So that right. gives, that helps them to not have to focus on a right. resident, you know. Yeah. If I'm taking them out at the end of the day, I'll just go down and. It's good it, teamwork. Yeah, exactly. It is. That's, yeah. Well, before we um, close the show, um, is there anything you want to. Talk about, I know your last child just graduated, so how do you feel about that? Oh, I'm still in the, <laughs> I'm still in the empty nest syndrome, but they haven't left home yet, but I, but they, they always gone. So I'm just like, it's, I know when they do leave, it's going to be, but I'm happy. I am very right. proud of them, and I'm happy that they're doing good things, and hopefully he'll get to go to the Air Force soon. And my oldest son just took a test for the Air Force, so he's waiting to get his PCAT or whatever, I don't know how you say it, to go up there to MEPS up in St. Louis. Mm. So maybe they'll both leave at the same time, I don't know, but yeah, it's gonna be But if they stick around a little longer, you're I okay wouldn't be with mad. that too. <laughs> I'll be happy. They can stick around till they wanna leave, it doesn't right. matter, so. Right. Well, um, we hope that you have um, enjoyed listening to us just chit chat a little bit. Um, if you have any questions for LaShonda and I, um, please, you know, reach out to us. Yes. We'd love to hear from you and make sure that you like and share our videos and leave us a comment. And yes, yeah, subscribe to the channel. Yeah. So um, we're glad that you spent this time with us and uh, come back and see us next week on KNL Everyday CNA.